The Humble Ejection Seat. I think it's safe to say that many were listed as an important piece of equipment on board modern combat aircraft. Despite this, I think it's also fair to say that it's basically an afterthought until it's really needed. Of course, there's technicians that have to work on it and have to safety the thing when the plane's not in use. But overall, it just doesn't get brought up in conversation otherwise. It's simply there. Not much else to say until things go really bad and you have to use it. Then you get a trip to the hospital and later a fancy tie. Meanwhile, you're internally grateful that it was there and it worked. So, in this video, I wanted to look into ejection seats. What's their history? Why do they work the way they do? What kind of interesting trivia can I find? Like every YouTube essay hack, we're going to reach back about a century. This time it's actually relevant to what we're talking about and not just for fluff, as the history plays into how we got the modern seats that we have today. The history of the ejection seat goes back to just about a decade after the dawn of aviation itself. For as long as humans have been able to fly, they've had a need for ejection seats. For the first 10 years of aviation, Pilot Seitu is basically summarized as hoping for the best and jumping out with a parachute if you have the margins to do so. The problem with this is parachutes tended to get tangled on the way out. I don't think I have to explain why that's a bad thing. To alleviate this issue, a young man in Paris, one Gaston Havu, invented what is essentially a parachute with a claspable frame inside of it that would force it open upon deployment. This new system was tested by throwing off this handsome dummy off the Eiffel Tower, which I guess was just the kind of thing young adults would do back in the day. The irony strikes hard when another Paris resident, Franz Vakelt, ridiculed Gaston as being a fraud for using a dummy. He set out to test his own parachute that he had sewn himself by jumping off the tower without a dummy. Gaston actually tried to talk Franz out of jumping, deciding the parachute didn't even have a reasonable amount of surface area to function properly. Insulted, but Franz jumped anyways, to his death of the year in 1912. That same year, a German pilot by the name of George Prinzel was attending an air race as a participant. As it was, the race was cancelled due to winds, so he had gone for a flight with a friend. Unfortunately, he was caught in his friend's wake and crashed. This led to him breaking a leg. While healing from his injury, he thought someone should really do something to improve the safety for pilots in case something went wrong. Then, since he is a pilot that had something go wrong, he did do something to improve pilot safety. George's endeavors led to what is probably the first development that it contributes to our modern day ejection seat. He created a steam powered cannon that sat behind the pilot of the aircraft. In the event of something going wrong, the pilot would activate the cannon, steam would launch the parachute, and then the parachute would drag the pilot out of the plane. Unfortunately, it wasn't entirely successful, but it was incredibly forward thinking. Unfortunately for George, he was arrested in Britain, accused of being a German saboteur. His parachute launcher was then taken by police and dunked in a lake, as they assumed it to be a bomb. Speaking of British incompetence, R.E. Calthrop was working on parachute technology as it was claimed that it was too bulky to be in combat aircraft, and as such were only given to crews aboard airships. Calthrop decided upon a system that was nearly identical to George's, though it went a step further and added a seat that hinged back. Calthrop insisted to the RAF that pilots should have parachutes, but was denied as to not, quote, impair the fighting spirit of pilots and cause them to abandon their machines which might otherwise be capable of returning to base for repair, 
With the end of the Great War came the sequel, and even further development on the endeavor of pilot safety. Independently developed by both Nazi Germany and Sweden by Henkel and Saab were the fully-fledged ejection seats. Inneko was rather tame, using compressed air to eject the seat from the night fighter HE-219. However, Saab elected to use explosives, as their seat was for a much higher performance daytime fighter, the Saab 17. So basically, pilots grenade jumped out of their planes when things went bad. Now, explosive cartridges aren't going away anytime soon. And towards the end of World War II, James Martin and Valentine Baker were operating an aircraft manufacturing company. Unfortunately, Valentine died operating a meteor. As a response, James oriented all his efforts towards improving pilot safety. He built a tower with a rail on it to test different seat configurations and the effects of acceleration on the human body. A close friend, Bernard Lynch, was used as the guinea pig. The first few launches were okay, but with the speeds of aircraft to keep getting higher and higher, and James knew that as much separation as possible was going to be needed. Unfortunately, he quickly reached a point where the acceleration of the seat had caused Bernard great pain. In fact, when a journalist was inquiring about testing the device, they launched him on it, breaking his back and sending him to the hospital. In response, James ordered human spines, which is a thing you can do apparently, and they were delivered to his secretary's desk. With zero forewarning. I bet she appreciated that. Essentially the problem he was dealing with is the spine was never designed to take such acceleration. I found an interesting research paper that took a bunch of human spines, see, that you could just order those for some reason, and applied weight to them to mimic the load they would experience inside the human body. They found that typically it was the lower back that experienced compression fractures due to the asymmetric load of the upper torso applying force to it due to the sudden acceleration of the seat. On the absolute high end, ejections can exert about 18 g's of acceleration to the pilot. This results in about a 50% chance of injury to the spine. Going up to 20 g's ups this to about 90% chance of injury. On a side note, the team suspects this is why ground forces also experience similar injuries, as the armor and gear they wear on the upper torso and around their waist create additional momentum, adding to the force exerted to the lower spine. With enough experimentation, James Martin ejected Bernard Lynch on many occasions on both the tower and from a modified Meteor airplane. The seat entered service with the RAF, and through many revisions has become the de facto standard for the industry. Some seats still use explosives, other revisions use a rocket cartridge hybrid system, while others only use rockets. Over 7,000 aviators have been saved by the seats. Once used, their pilot is able to join the Martin Baker Tie Club. This gives you a certificate, an ejection handle, a tie, and a swank watch. To wrap up this endeavor of trying to better understand ejection seats, I want to touch on a couple things I've seen on the internet. When the F-35B crashed at Fort Worth, I'd see a couple people commenting about the seats needing more separation. In reality, as you've just heard a bit ago, these seats are already operating on the edge of what a human could possibly withstand. The process is extremely violent. Pulling the handle activates the explosives that either eject the canopy or otherwise is a depth cord stuck to the glass. From there you have to brace yourself, and all your limbs are either restrained to the seat or a net prevents them from snapping as they enter the slipstream of the aircraft. And from there you're subjected to a maximum of 18 times the force of gravity as a literal rocket sends you into the heavens. After that you're in whatever weather you're in, which at high altitudes mean deadly cold temperatures. So you will have temperature shock to deal with as well. Finally, when suitable, the seat separates you and the parachute deploys. Suddenly you're subjected to another violent jolt, but thankfully the parachute has a net for your head so you don't snap your neck. All that is to say that while the ejection seat is a revolution of pilot safety, it's still extremely violent and dangerous. In fact, statistics from the Israeli Air Force suggest about 20% of ejections tend to result in serious injury. It's for the same reason why we don't see ejection seats installed on every aircraft as they would likely injure the occupant anyways, which would result in death before search and rescue could even get to them. Besides that, there's also the weight and cost considerations that would extremely quickly decimate the economics of commercial airliners. With that being said, this concludes the video. If you've enjoyed this presentation, please subscribe. In the meantime, enjoy your dance with the angels.